good morning good morning from uh downtown salt lake city utah and it is an absolutely gorgeous spring day here it's 55 degrees and it's only 9 30 in the morning spring has sprung the day has finally come folks it's gonna be a fun fun morning here just pulled into primary children's hospital casey should be here in about five minutes and we get to finally present the check that all of you all of us were able to raise through the Hush Movie Night. We've told you about it, we've talked about it, gave you the tally. It is now time to hand it over to Primary Children's so they can then put it to good use. We're gonna put it in two buckets of, uh, of funding. Bucket number one is gonna be comprehensive care. That has a lot of meaning to the Isaac and his entire family. With uh, Melissa's story that you heard on the video <clears throat> that we played before the movie night, and we'll also leave a link in the description box in case you missed it, go watch that. But that is the uh, care center, the care funding area, I suppose you could say, that was able to help benefit and provide all the exceptional care that Isaac and Brandy talked about in their story. The second bucket we're gonna contribute to is gonna be the Child Cancer Research Fund, which if you watched the second part of that video in Lincoln's story, that is obviously what uh, Lincoln and his family are passionate about because they were able to uh, receive the care that came directly out of that funding. So those are the two buckets that have meaning to us. They tie back into not only Isaac and Brandy's story, but also Lincoln and his family's story. And so we're gonna split the money equally between those two funds. And then it's all up to primary children from there. They're gonna be able to do whatever it is that they need to do with that kind of funding to help other families. And like Lincoln talked about in his piece, which for a, a young boy, I think is really powerful. He really is all about paying it forward for the next person in line. He spent many, 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 many hours and days uh, battling cancer up here at this hospital. And for him to have kind of that mindset that he wants to continue to think about the next kid that's going to be coming through those doors fighting the same fight that he fought uh, is is very emotional I think he's, uh, he's such a good little young man and uh, for us to try to help in a little tiny way so he could give back and share his story and inspire others to give is pretty awesome so I'm gonna hop out head up there and see if we can go meet up with Casey and deliver this check let us know down below um, what something you guys would feel good about giving back to next year for the uh, fifth annual Hush movie premiere. We want to know what your guys' thoughts. Maybe it's not something local, but national, something. I don't know. Every year we can just kind of figure out something that we want to give back to. Kind of at the last second, usually. That's how we kind of run Hush. But uh, let us know if there's anything that you think would be deserving of, uh, of some money next year. Well, I got super lost, like usual. So instead of being like four minutes late, we're 12 minutes late, but Brian's here. Brian's on time, very, very punctual, but I think we are in the right spot, so. Hello, my name is Cindy Woolley, and I'm the Foundation Relations Manager at Primary Children's Hospital. And we serve over six states with our services here because we are a freestanding hospital with over 289 beds. And what we do here is um, help the children become kids again. We want them to get their uh, kid life back. We serve children all the way to age 22. Last year we served almost 99,000 children. So anyone is welcome to donate to Primary Children's Hospital by going online to primarychildrens.org slash give. We're always looking for donations because philanthropy helps a lot of the patients every single day that come to our hospital and it makes a huge impact on the level of treatment that we can provide to these children and the level of help we can help even long after they're gone from our hospital. I just want to express my appreciation to your company and to your friends and to your followers for the fundraising that you did for our foundation. The money that you raise will go directly to help children here at Primary Children's Hospital. You've done a great thing and we appreciate your support. It really makes a big difference for the kids and the families here and you guys 
got to meet those families or already know those families, yeah. which is really exciting. Almost everyone had were directly affected by mm -hmm. primary children's and somehow or knew somebody that mm -hmm. has been affected by it. Well, it's the best part of working here is connecting with the families and knowing what a great service that we provide our community. Just wanted to thank everybody, uh, not only those of you that attended the movie night, but anybody that bought one of the limited edition floor plate t-shirts. Like we mentioned earlier, all of your donations that we were raised are going right here to Primary Children. So we are handing over the check officially. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you guys so much for letting us be a part of this. And we can't wait to uh, continue to spread the good word. And like you guys heard earlier from Haley, if you want to give back or you're inspired to give back by this, they are always accepting donations. And you can do that. We'll leave a link in the description box to let you guys know how you can donate. Thank you, everyone. You bet. Cool building, got a lot of character. Guys, this is the new Mountain Ops office. This guy started uh, from humble beginnings in the in the uh, a shared space of a car dealership for the first three, four years. Three I think. years, yeah. We used to. That's where we also used to ship all of our hats and merchandise from. Uh, a little tiny corner of their warehouse, and here we are, four years later, and they have this new beautiful building. It looks like a fortress. We're gonna go in there. It's got a ton of character. Very, very neat space. I looked at it, uh, Eric and I came up here when they were remodeling it. Looks like they still have some work to do, but it is awesome looking. Jeez. Welcome to the Mountain Ops Fortress. I'm pretty disappointed because it doesn't have a moat around it, but it is built out of rock, so we have that going. Wow. So cool. Pretty cool building you guys got here. Kind of looks like a fortress, a little bit of an upgrade. I'm just disappointed there's not a motor out of it though. Right. So With a dragon. We're working on it. Very nice. Yeah, this is what Hush needs, Brian. Hey, what's up, man? Jordan shot? Dude, okay, we're here. Good. We uh, stopped by the store. We are getting ready to launch um, the new fishing stuff, which will hopefully be up in the next couple weeks. Can we show them this, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so these are the designs we decided to go with for uh, the spring launch. And so we got this green here, which is going to be accompanied with this patch, right? This hat, just as it is, without the sweat marks. And then what I like to call the Ron Burgundy is gonna also have the same patch. And this gray, what are we gonna call this one? No name yet. Pick a name, folks. Pick a Help name. Help us pick a name for this hat. It'll be this hat, super sharp hat with a same patch, the fish patch. Also on the new launch is going to be three new fishing shirts. This is gonna be called the Black Steelhead. I don't know. This is the 50-50, also the 50-50. And then this, Sweater, this zip up gunmetal heather, which Brian is sporting today. I like this one. It's a little bit of a lighter weight hoodie than our other traditional hoodies. So, yeah. kind of good one for spring. I like the zip up and then just this very basic leather fish, fish patch. All brought to you by Logan the Cave Butler 55. 55. So anyway, yeah, we are going to launch those hopefully in the next two weeks. So we'll be looking for those. And we're just kind of going through the store scene. What we have, what we need to get rid of. Um, but we also just want to say we are so very grateful for any of you that have ever purchased any of our merchandise. It means the world to us. But and if you haven't, just thanks for the support. So as you guys saw this morning, we were able to go give away the check to Primary Children's Hospital, which was super cool. And once again, that's all because of you guys and your support. Thank you. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Hope everybody's doing well. I also hope you guys are enjoying all the content that we've been putting up. Our goal, shh, don't tell anybody. We're gonna to try to have five videos a week. That is our goal this year in 2018. So we're off to a pretty good start. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, a couple things I wanna show you. We got some samples from First Light. Every year about this time, First Light launches all the new product lines. So for the 2018 lineup, they've got a ton of new stuff coming out. Some big announcements. This is a new Aero 150 hoodie. I'm a big hoodie fan. I'm not sure what you guys think of the hoods. I like the hoods in hot weather, but I also like it when it's chilly out because it keeps uh, a little bit of the wind off you. A couple other samples I'm super excited about. This is the Chamberlain Puffy. This is gonna be the first ever down 
puffy piece and it is a legit true big heavy puffy coat probably not something you're gonna put in like an early fall backpack hunt but most certainly any kind of late hunts where it's gonna be very cold out full hood tons of insulation we had these on the steelhead trip in Oregon and they are very 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 warm so that's gonna be coming out the Chamberlain totally revamped their soft shell can you guys hear that it's super quiet these are the soft shell pants show you what the inside looks like kind of a little fleece type lining breathe very well but they're very very quiet they also have a matching jack Casey has a sample of that totally rebuilt the marina lineup for uh, for the bottoms and then just a whole host of other products are going to be available at firstlight.com you guys can go to their website March 27th order yourself all the new first light gear go check it out the website will be live it'll be up to date old stuff that has been around a long time will also be restocked and then obviously the 2018 lineup is going to be fully in effect on March 28th at 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time first light is going to have a live unveiling so they're going to be able to talk specifically about each piece of the new lineup and then have an interactive q a so you can go to firstlight.com uh, we're going to leave a link actually in the description box of this video where you can go register not only will you learn about the new product ask questions about it but you can also win some of the prototypes that they're going to be talking about maybe just maybe there may be a couple familiar faces up at their office helping them roll it out. Go check it out, they're a great company. They do a ton of stuff for conservation. They give a lot of stuff back in the name of public land access and just overall fantastic people that make a great product. So hold on, I gotta let my dog out. This is what he does. He sits at the door and whines at me. Go, 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 go. If you guys watched the semi-live steelhead trip with Born and Raised, you saw us catch a lot of fish. Casey, Eric, and myself, we all caught fish that we could keep and cook and bonk. I've been waiting for this package since we left Oregon. Chael took all the fish back to his place in Central Oregon, put it through his extra special recipe. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we have. Look at all this smoked goodness. I just got this in the mail today. This is smoked steelhead. It has not yet been frozen and went straight from the river to the smoker. I believe the lighter stuff is off Casey's fish and the darker stuff is off my fish. So Chael brined the fish for 12 hours. Then he smoked it for eight hours, dried it for six hours, packaged it, and shipped it. He shipped it all the way back to Utah for Casey and I. Okay, last thing about first light. Forgot to mention this. But it's a big big announcement this year for them. They made a decision as a company to kind of go where the customers want them to be. Moving forward as of March 27th, they are going to be 100% consumer direct online. For all of you, all of us, all of our consumers, you will buy everything directly through firstlight.com. I think it's a fantastic idea. They have more control. You will most likely see all of the price points reduced. A lot of people might say, oh, they're gonna be putting more money in their pocket. I would disagree with that. All they're doing is they're taking that retail margin that would normally go to a big box store and they were then passing on that savings to us, to you, to the people that are gonna be buying it direct. So they're not really making any more money. They're simply just passing on the savings to us. I don't know how you guys feel, but when I go to a big box store, Nine out of 10 times, the folks that are there at the store are nice people. Unfortunately, they don't know that much about the product that I'm looking for. And there really isn't that much value other than convenience. Convenience is the best thing. If you need something, you can go grab it and you are you got what you want. Aside from that though, being able to buy something online where you can do your own homework, you can do your own research and then save yourself a little bit of money. That really is where the industry is going. If you think about what Amazon does, the age of uh, shopping online, that's just, the way the consumer wants to buy. So big move for First Light. You're gonna be able to buy their gear at a better price. They're gonna have more control of their inventory, more creativity with how they market and do sales and things like that. So we're super excited. It's a really smart move. Go check out firstlight.com. Really? Here, put it down so I can see it first. All right guys, we have been waiting to try this out. This is a uh, steelhead we caught in Oregon that our good buddy Chill brined and smoked. 
We're gonna give her the old taste test. You're on the vlog, Deuce. Guys, these are hatchery steelhead. Uh, one is from Brian's giant steelhead he caught the last day. And one is from, some of it is from my uh, long spawned out, is it called a hen? Hen that I caught uh, the second day of our trip. But our good buddy Chill, he has a special recipe where he brines and smokes and then pretty much dehydrates it, this. And from times past that we've had it, it is like candy. I'm gonna give you the first taste test right now. Amazing. I can eat a, literally a ton, 2,000 pounds of this throughout the year. He's just such a thirsty little guy. He's drank probably a gallon and a half of water since we've been home in the last 15 minutes. You wanna try a bite? It's all about the brine, man. I think that's what the key is, the brine? Oh yeah. I mean, you can smoke it and it'll taste good, but that brine is Wow, it's so phenomenal. Good. So he brines yeah. it, yeah. then smokes it, and, and then dries it, dries it, and, and then sends it. Packages it and sends it in the mail. Man, that's pretty good nice. process. Hmm. What's funny is, you know, born and raised guys, Chell, they all have a pretty good grip on what fish are gonna taste good. We try to keep most of the planter, or not planter, but hatchery fish we catch. And every time we cut them open, they're like, oh, it's spawned out, it's not gonna be that good. The fish I caught was definitely spawned out, and we ate some of it on the smoker there, and it was good. But I think any fish, no matter what the, you know, where it's at in its cycle, you could do this recipe, and it would taste amazing. I wanna try to trap. Yeah, I think it'd be so good. They were saying too that with a lot of the steelhead that have already spawned out, which for those of you that have never fished for steelhead, You've seen the ones that are really bright, pretty chrome. Those just came into the river system out of the ocean. So they're still very, very bright, pretty. Those are my favorite. Then you have fish that have been in the river for a while. They develop a little bit more color. We caught quite a few of those. And then you have fish they call downers. They've already spawned. They're kind of on the back end of life. And they're usually very, very dark. And their meat goes the other direction. It goes from a brighter red color to like a very pale, Kind of a mushy texture. Those of you guys that have ever fished for steelhead up in like Idaho off the Salmon River, most of those fish are really dark color. They almost don't even look anything like the fish that we're catching on the coast. But smoking them is the best way to take and use that meat in our opinion, for sure. Because this stuff will make anything taste good, really. Yeah, it was, your fish was questionable when we, Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was definitely not a downer, but it was, Mushy and been around pale. A yeah, I learned that. Like Brian said, I learned this the other day. The longer they've been in the fresh water, the more color they'll have. So if they've just left the salt water and have just entered into the fresh water, then that's when they are still chrome, as we call it, and very bright. And that's why in Idaho they have to run up the fresh water so long. By the time they get to where they're at and where we fish for them, they're always colored up. So on the coast, it, it can go both ways. You catch colored up ones, and we catch chromers, as we call them. But either way, man. Smoke them. It's honestly like candy. Probably better for you too. 